Hi everyone, Paul here again. Just thought I'd give you a brief update on what I'm doing here at the RMK Merrill Stevens Shipyard. Uh, it's been a while since I've posted anything on YouTube. Uh, that's because I've been doing mostly a bunch of modifications and uh, stuff that's probably not too interesting for the video world. Uh, I thought I would at least give you a brief overview of the final application of my copper coat, which will be the, one of the last things I do before getting in the water here in the next week or two. Uh, first, I want to apologize for shooting the whole video in portrait mode. Uh, it drives me crazy too, but I wasn't thinking when I did it. So hopefully you'll forgive this video and I'll try to do better in the future. Uh, I contacted Jim Edwards over at Copper Coat USA and he gave me uh, a wealth of information. His website has a bunch of videos, do's and don'ts. And for anybody considering a Copper Coat application, I would make that my first step to get a lot of information on just what it is and uh, if it's right for your application. Then I asked the people at RMK Merrill Stevens to do the work for me. Uh, a lot of people say it can be a do-it-yourself project. Uh, depending on your skill level, uh, for a vessel this size, it's about 60 feet length overall. Uh, definitely something for the professionals as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the preparation, uh, the time necessary to apply it. Uh, it took six men over at RMK Merrill Stevens uh, about six or seven hours to do my application. So it would be quite a project for a do-it-yourselfer. Uh, the preparation is one of the most important parts uh, of the copper coat application. Uh, you start off with a 80 grit sandpaper and uh, basically rough the bottom up of your vessel. Uh, this gives the copper coat something to adhere to. Uh, you'll notice they've taped off anything that was not getting copper coated and then they wipe down the hull to make sure that the uh, copper coat had a clean surface to adhere to. Uh, the mixing of the copper coat is very, very critical. Uh, it's a three-part epoxy, uh, water-based epoxy mixture. Uh, typical epoxy, you know, hardener and a resin uh, mix, but it, then you mix in the third part, and the most important part is you mix actual copper granules into the paint. So it's very important that you continually mix that paint to keep the copper suspended. Uh, if the copper settles out of it, uh, defeats the purpose of uh, putting on the application. Also in the Florida heat uh, at 70 degrees, uh, the shelf life of copper coat is only about 30 minutes. So it's important that you only mix small quantities that you can use and apply in that time frame. So uh, Greg Cox and Brent Alsop over at RMK Merrill Stevens came up with a pretty good plan of putting uh, three men on each side of the vessel uh, one on each side, strictly whose job was to mix the copper coat. Uh, he mixed small quantities and made sure that he continually mixed it throughout the application process so that the copper was suspended in the material. Uh, you'll notice as the gentlemen are putting on the coats, the first one is very, very thin. You can actually see through it. Uh, it's, it looks a little bit splotchy in spots when they first put it on. But by the second and third coats, uh, and definitely by the uh, fourth coat, it's a nice, even, copper-looking, uh, brownish uh, color application. Um, it's very important, once the copper coat is applied, it dries for 48 to 72 hours without getting any moisture, not even dew, uh, definitely not rain. Uh, it definitely, it's a water-based product, and any water getting on it at all can definitely damage the uh, application. So what these gentlemen do after they put on their four coats, we let it dry for about 48 to 72 hours, and then it's time to move the stands uh, so that they can paint the areas that couldn't be painted because of the stands before. So the next thing you do, you move the stands, uh, treat those areas the same way, 80 grit sandpaper, four coats of the copper coat, and let that dry for 48 to 72 hours. Uh, copper coat has one final step that's not usually done on most bottom coats. Uh, when the epoxy dries, uh, you have to let the copper rise to the surface so that it'll do its effectiveness. So basically, before you put the boat in the water, it's important to take 320 grit sandpaper and again go over the entire painted surface and take off the sheen that's there and expose the underlying copper layer. That's really where the protection comes from. It seems like a little bit of a longer process than most bottom painting, and I guess it is. But the nice thing about it is copper coat uh, can last a minimum of five to up to 10 years if it's taken care of and depending on the waters that it's in. So uh, if you watch some other videos, you'll see some people praise copper coat and you'll see some other people say it doesn't do anything. 
Uh, from my experience, I think the application is the most important part of the process. Uh, like anything else, if it's not done properly, you can't expect it to work miracles. So uh, I highly recommend the product. Uh, I think it's uh, really, really effective. Uh, the people over at RMK Merrill Stevens, I can't thank them enough for all they've done. Uh, before the job was even done, they brought all the people that were going to be working on the vessel inside, showed them the videos, let them read the materials, so they were all very well briefed on how to apply it. And they do it like everything else they do at RMK Merrill Stevens. Uh, they do it like it was their own boat. Very highly skilled men. Uh, I can't thank them enough for all their hard work. They were out in the sun today for probably seven or eight hours straight without even taking a break just to uh, make sure it was done properly. So my hat's off to them. Uh, Jim Edwards, thank you for all your help. Uh, RMK, Merrill Stevens, uh, Greg Cox, Brent Alsop, uh, you guys are awesome. I really appreciate everything. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and a like. Uh, I hope you'll subscribe. Uh, I should be getting back in the water here in the next uh, well, couple of weeks. And then I hope to have some on-the-water videos and some adventures going around. I know the world is kind of crazy right now. Hopefully when things get back to normal, uh, I'll be able to get back out on the water and uh, have some more interesting videos for you. Thanks for watching. I appreciate your time and look forward to uh, putting out some more videos for you in the near future. Have a great day.